that's what's more fun for me. I spent most of my life as an actor. He's 82 years old. He's given us 79 movies and not one bad performance. Gene Hackman has delivered some of the grittiest and most memorable characters over the last 50 years, but we haven't seen him on the big screen since 2004. Is he really finished? Gene Hackman has a reputation as an everyman, for better or for worse. But in actual fact, he's a bit of an enigma. He's one of the most respected actors in Hollywood, a dual Academy Award winner who's been in the biz for longer than most of us have been alive. Yet, on the other hand, with all due respect, He's got the forgettability of some dude just sitting next to you on a plane for a long haul flight. Hackman bluffed his way into the Marines at 16. At 19, he wound up at the Pasadena Playhouse in California, where he met another struggling nobody called Dustin Hoffman. Classmates voted both of them least likely to succeed. Don't they sound like a pretty brainy bunch? Hackman and Hoffman headed for New York, where they hooked up with another acting buddy of theirs, Robert Duvall. The three of them roamed the city, hustling for acting work by day, hitting the bars at night. Will someone please make that movie? Decades later, when asked what advice he'd give to the young Gene Hackman, this is what he had to say. I would tell him to speak up, uh, <laughs> to not mumble, to, uh, to take a stand, to be confident. Um, a lot of things. Although, you know, in watching the, some of the early things, I, I, thought, I think for my age at the time I was doing those, uh, the, it was probably okay. Hoffman landed Mrs. Robinson. Duval was cast in To Kill a Mockingbird, and Hackman hit pay dirt in Bonnie and Clyde. The rambunctious trio were on their way. Warren Beatty, who was producer, cast Hackman after the pair met on the psychological drama Lilith. Hackman counts Bonnie and Clyde, starring Faye Dunaway and Warren Beatty, as the role that jettisoned him from an average actor to a bona fide character actor in a huge Hollywood hit. The film struck a chord with the counterculture of the 1960s and made superstars of Dunaway and Beatty and made Hackman viably bankable. Hackman's work in the film also nabbed him his first of what would become five Oscar nominations. His next was for I Never Sang For My Father, but it wasn't until his role as Popeye Doyle, a tough New York narc cop in The French Connection, that he took away his first little golden man for best actor, which years later, when accepting his second Academy Award, he would say was less than expected. Well, the, the first one was, um, I think more of a shock. I, I mean, I really didn't, uh, I didn't think, uh, I, I was going to win that at all. And at least this one, I, I was around, and I, there was other awards and, and things. So you, you say, well, maybe I have a chance of whatever. Um, it means a great deal. Now firmly established as a leading man, Hackman began to take a series of roles that further demonstrated his range and versatility. His turn as a crusading preacher in the awesomely cheesy adventure yarn, The Poseidon Adventure, was a hit. And his chops were equaled opposite Al Pacino in the Buddy Road movie, The Scarecrow. Coppola's The Conversation offered one of the richest characterizations of his long career and nabbed a bunch of Oscar nominations. By the late 70s, his work had taken a bit of a slide. And by the time he was giving us Lex Luthor in Superman, he'd prematurely announced his retirement citing non-stop work, leaving him physically and emotionally drained. He spent his time painting in an LA apartment and was eventually pulled back into the game by his old mate Warren Beatty for the epic Reds. Re-energised after his self-imposed exile, he etched out a succession of memorable characters in the 80s, oscillating between lead and supporting roles. He rounded off the 80s superbly. His turn as the FBI agent investigating the murders of civil rights workers in the 1960s in Mississippi Burning. For this, he picked up another Academy Award nomination for Best Actor. Hackman reflected on the responsibilities of an actor, not just in a controversial and political film like Mississippi Burning, but in every job he takes. You know, uh, your job as an actor is also to uh, allow the audience to uh, be accessible to the, the character that you're playing. And, and if you can show some joy 
and happiness while you're while you're playing that or or stark terror or whatever else that people enjoy watching uh then that's you know that's the job of the actor and it might look like all those clips were great fun but they were uh <laughs> they were a lot of hard work actually what was the struggle well the struggle is always uh, trying to communicate with with the director and the other actors and uh, the 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 fun of that and 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 how that works and how that serves the author's intent. Throughout the 90s, Hackman remained exceptionally busy. Though heart surgery meant another brief hiatus, he roared back with another fascinating role in Clint Eastwood's Western, Unforgiven. Accolades rained down on Hackman for his portrayal of ambiguous lawman, Little Bill Daggett. And he was rewarded with another Academy Award for Best Supporting Actor. After the win, Hackman was candid about his feelings towards the award. The problem with it for me always is the, the tension that goes with it. This thing starts way back in January and December, you know, if a film has any kind of heat at all. And it's just endless, you know, the Golden Globes and the, all the other kinds of things. And the British Oscar, the, uh, all the various critics awards. I don't know, I don't, I don't know how to do this. You know, I, I wasn't trained to do this. And so I, I really, uh, I really feel kind of at sea in this situation, where if you if if I have a script or and I know what I'm doing and I feel very confident and um, what was your question? <laughs> <laughs> and when asked about the whereabouts of his first Oscar, he said this: the other one is in storage somewhere and we haven't been able to find it. Oh. In a lot of trouble. With his health on track and in demand more than ever. Hackman embarked on another round of seemingly non-stop roles. His turn in The Firm had Tom Cruise singing his praises. Oh yeah, this is a great actor here. He was great. You want to know something? I asked him, I said, what is the secret on this? He, I, I, I'm going to embarrass him here now. <laughs> Come on, Gene. Get over here. I know for, I speak for myself and I know for Jeannie, we were both very excited to be working with Gene Hackman, but I, it's something to uh, aspire to. He never stops working on his characters and he's a very hard worker and uh, doesn't take it for granted. I didn't feel when I was working with him and, and, and he's just a, he's a real person. And in the mid 90s, Hackman embraced his inner gunslinger with a fondness for westerns in Geronimo, Wyatt Earp and The Quick and the Dead. Then, loosening up, he flexed his funny bone as a sleazy producer in Get Shorty. Then he got his drag on, literally, opposite Robin Williams in The Birdcage. Then he was back to his dark, sinister best as a racist on death row in The Chamber. And again, directed by his old mate Clint as a US president involved in a murder investigation in Absolute Power. Starting to feel like he'd given all that he could to Hollywood, he changed career path a little and went into the world of publishing, printing his first novel. He was still present on the big screen, but less and less, and it looked like his career was starting to slow down. But he still had at least one great performance in him. That's right, it was as selfish Royal Tannenbaum, the shamelessly insensitive failure of a father who lies to his family about his cancer in order to get close to them. A role that, despite his protests, was written for him by uber-hip director Wes Anderson. He told me that he had an idea for a film that he'd like me to be in. And uh, I, I asked him not to do that, not to write it for me, because I, I don't particularly like the things that are written for me. I'd rather kind of invent things that are, rather than have to do something uh, with somebody's idea of who they think I am funny kind of peculiar situation but anyway uh, we had a nice chat and, and uh, after I told him not to do it he went off and did it anyway. <laughs> Hackman was brilliant whooping it up as royal scoffing Tic Tacs as medication shockingly favoring one son over the other and altogether ignoring his adopted daughter corrupting his two grandsons sparring with his ex-wife and generally lying to everyone. He won a Golden Globe for his efforts and predictably reflected that it was the ensemble cast that made him nail the role. Well, any time that you're supported by really good people, you're going to be better. That's, that's just that's a fact, that if you're surrounded by, by really top people, 
you you can you can stretch you can you can take you can take some chances much like the royal tenenbaums hackman's personal life certainly has had its ups and downs he divorced his first wife of 30 odd years and has always been candid about being an absent father to his three kids constantly on set but never at home what i see from it is that that good families always keep trying and it doesn't mean that things are going to work smoothly but they they keep trying and that there is that that basic love that uh families have hackman's last film to date is 2004's underwhelming welcome to mooseport he now spends his time writing and painting at home in santa fe new mexico with his second wife Having equaled his old mate Dusty in being awarded two Oscars, he had this to say back in 93. I wanted this tonight because, um, as you say, it, it kind of puts a book into my career for me. I, I'm sure I'll do other uh, films, uh, but I can kind of relax and, and kind of not have to worry about this thing. As long as Dustin doesn't get another one, then I have to <laughs> come back and... <laughs> I would hope that my friend Bob Duval would uh, would be up here one day uh, again because he's such a deserving actor. Well, the big question is, has hard man Hackman retired? And sadly, for now, the answer is yes. He was asked recently how he'd sum up his life and he said simply, he tried. Well, here at Star Picks, we reckon he did pretty well. Stick with us here at Star Picks for all the movies you know and the actors you love. Broadcast in high definition with 5.1 surround sound where available. For more of the best in entertainment news, check out your movie network channels. Find or follow us on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube and MNC.tv.